Ghana go. Small Billy, grandma. After we don't distribute the girl, you carry the first one, I carry the other one. She knows what she's doing and she's enjoying it. We all have our weaknesses. Yo, Billy, no! Go, no, the Yara Remu. The letter, we interchange. Wow, wow. Now, so. Wow, wow. Thanks for coming. Thanks for making me go. She didn't want to understand it in my head. Hey, I don't want to sleep with you now. Ah. Eh? Use demonic spirits. I say, ah! The Holy Ghost inside of me will burn you. Oh, you liar. Can they tell you, Sabe? Poison me, you the fuck up. When you go to know this game now? Where you go? Yeah. Why your life? No, no pass. No pass. Shoot, 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 shoot. Make it just a shoot. Don't shut yourself. Nothing, I'm not an animal. Me. Tell you, Bamba, you tell me what I'm doing. That I cannot agree with.
Um, M series engine. This is where I do that uh, thing you do. Okay, uh, many of you guys are the best. M series is the name uh, the comedy philosophical comedian of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Oh, Shere! The stage a lot of comedy and the Crown Prince of Talk. God bless you. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, and you know, um, that's you know, the reason why we went for someone like him. Yet on the other hand, you know, energetic. I don't know if you've seen Johnny in the TV series. Yeah, that's dead. He looks like a normal person right now. It's not normal. It's not normal. Um, of course, of course, of course. Of course. Yeah, do, I need to, do I need to go there? No. Of course, I don't mind. Um, we have um, Eti Nosa. I don't know if any of you know her. And then Rahama. Rahama is um, one of the biggest actresses in the world. And she's on this week. She's she's a 22 year old. So basically when we were picking the cast, we were looking for people who fit the bill. We were necessarily looking for, you know, kind of look. She came and killed it, expectedly. We also had Mama um, Yawel from back in the day to play the old man. That's what we were doing when we were casting. Nice. Thank you. So good afternoon. Um, we are here with the director and the producer of the movie Ajoya. Uh, okay, um, the the title of the movie, aside from the fact that the movie has to do with coppers, and uh, why did you pick Ajoya, a Yoruba descent? Why did you put? Okay, so we went through you know, like a process. You know, initially we were thinking we wanted to talk about we wanted to call the film the copper, but then everybody goes with that direction. The uh, the, the the visitor, the you know. So we said, okay, let's go away from that. What other, you know, um, name would people be familiar with? Um, so we decided, we, we had to choose between Otondo and, you know, Ajuwaya. And that's what they call, uh, what do you call it? The camp guys used to call people who served. They called us Ajuwaya. And so, hey, we, we decided to go with Ajuwaya. But then, you know, Ajuwaya is a very generic name. So what we decided was Ajuwaya, the haunted village. You know, to give it a little character, to tell you, Again, when we were thinking about the name, we were thinking long term. This story came out of a conversation I had with a friend, you know, during NYC. And so I thought to myself, can we, if we have Ajuwaya, the haunted village now, why can't we have Ajuwaya, the road trip? Ajuwaya, the mountain, you know, the mountain tour. You know, and couples do all sorts of fun things when they're serving. So this is an opportunity for us to do something like that. Considering the fact that um, so many movies that are making that topping the charts and box office has to do with comedy, has to do with ge general comedy and not like a fusion of comedy but main comedy, how do you see Ajuaya doing in the box office? Okay, so um, I, I, in my opinion, I think um, Ajuaya has a mix of both. What we tried to do was tell a very serious, you know, thoughtful um, story while ensuring that while you watch it, you have a good time. So we have two very strong comedians on the project, you know, adding that mix to it. Because we know Nigerians, they want to they wanna go to the cinemas and have fun. And the idea is to have fun while, you know, going through a very interesting story. And that's, and that's what we do with Ajuwai. Okay, so what's your budget looking like in the box office? Um, well, we've not started, we've not started in the box office. We're not in the cinemas until July 7. However, it's looking very hopeful. When we went on the um, NYC camp tours, the young people there were really excited about it. They, you know, they all, you know, promised to come see us in the cinemas, and we're saying to them, um, beyond that, we want to, you know, want to reach the younger people. When we're thinking about the film, we're saying, guys, how do we reach that younger age? They're always watching Transformers. They're watching, you know, um, Avengers. We should be able to tell their own stories in their own context, the, through their own experiences. And what we wanted to do with that drive was to tell the young people's story. Thank you so very much. We are here with the delected and the beautiful Lala Akindoji. Hi, hi. Nice to have you here. So you starred in the movie Ajuaya. Um, did you have any challenges playing the role that you played in this particular movie? Every role comes with a challenge because it's, it's fresh work, it's new, it's something I haven't done before. Um, but I think for this one in particular, it was a challenge but I was excited and I was looking forward to taking up the challenge. So when we got to the location in Oshun State, I had to speak to some of the women there who actually sell bread. Like, how do you guys speak? Because Lagos Yoruba and Aroke Yoruba, they are different. So, you know, I mean, I, I felt like on my own, I knew some of it, but you know, you, 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 can't, you can't deceive people. <laughs> so, yeah, so that, that in itself, and just reminding myself to speak like that, like that, you know, not to switch to the Yoruba that I'm comfortable with. Um, and just generally, you know, um, Yewande, 
the character is maybe 19, you know, and she has village innocence. So, you know, just reminding myself that, you know, this girl, so even she sounds sweet, so even the things she's saying, they might be heavy, as you may have seen some of the reactions from the couples, they're heavy, but she's just saying it innocently, like, ah, this is it, you know, so that as well. Um, yeah, and then, you know, working in a, in a village, shooting in a village is a different ballgame entirely, you know, in the forest, with the insects. The mosquito, the rain, you know the film looks so nice, I say, uh, if only people know what we went through, but I mean it's all part of it and I would not trade the experience for anything, it's very good. So, Nollywood recently has been churning out lots of comedy movies because that is what is getting them into the box office charts and everything. So, Adria has a blend of comedy, but it's still a serious movie to watch. I know. How do you see doing it in the cinema? Um, to be honest, one of the reasons I decided to do this film was because I saw that the producer director, Tolu Lotana, was trying to do something different. And I'm here for different. I'm here for, you know, let's not do what everybody's doing. So, I know that he's taking a chance. Um, but this movie is also targeted at youth coppers. The, the, he knows who he wants to see the film and I think that's very commendable because we also need to make films that attack, um, that are made for different audiences because not everybody lives in Ikoi and VI and Lekki and goes to the IMAX, you know. Whilst we would like those people to go and see this film, this film is really for the coppers, the university um, undergraduates, people in Ibadan, people in Oshun, people in, and that's where we're going. And I'm, you know, I am excited because there's cinemas there. And you know, it's not only about Lagos. Lagos people will see it, we want them to see it, but even more so the people outside Lagos. So whilst I can't make any projections, I feel like the film would do exactly what it was made to do. So now you're saying that um, the movie has to do with, okay, let, first of all, the, the name is quite catchy because yes. I was expecting something like maybe the copper or, or something based, based on the fact that it's, it's called Ajuaya makes it quite catchy for people to see it. But now how do you convince Nigerians to go watch this movie without them, okay, we have press people now, we have to put things onto it here, but how do you convince people generally to just go see this movie? First of all, 80% of Nigerian adults have served. You know, everybody knows what Ajuaya means. You went to youth service, Ajuaya, we make fun, it was as you were, that the soldiers now call Ajuaya. Everybody had a clique of friends in, in, or in camp that they either are still friends with or they, you know, they're falling out with. Everybody has one, re one memory of how I traveled far to my camp or something. So that's one reason to go and see it. Another reason is because it's a Nollywood film. Now, Nollywood is rising. You have to support Nollywood. Another reason is because Tony Lotana made a couple of days and it was a success. That was his first feature. This is his second. So you want to see his track record. And of course, Lala is in the film. Go and see it. <laughs> okay, so we are here with Timney. Yeah? Timney. Okay, so we are here with Timney. Hollywood fine boy, like someone just said it right now. Yeah, you are. Is that what you think? Yes. But is that what you, oh my God, I've made it. <laughs> I've made it in life. Okay, so we are talking about Adriaya right now. Um, Adriaya seems to be a very catchy movie from judging from the little that we have seen right now. How was it like playing the role you played in the movie? It was hilarious, first of all, because I was working with like three great comedians. So even despite the fact that it was rough on set sometimes, they always kept it funny, they always kept us laughing and all of that. But it was a great experience. It was a great learning experience for me. That was the first ever movie that I've done that took me to the village, you know, and took me to the bushes, you know. So it wasn't fresh, it wasn't nice, it wasn't AC rooms and all of that. But then at the end of the day, it was a great experience and I believe that we made a great movie. Okay, so how do you plan on convincing people to go watch the movie? I know we have lots of users going to watch it, but do you think this movie is going to do great? Judging from the fact that, okay, let's imagine there's a Wonder Woman in the cinema and then there's an Ajuaya in the cinema. So how do you convince you, it's Nigerian youth, to watch this movie? Yo, it's an amazing movie. First of all, I'll tell you for free. If you're a copa, if you've finished serving, if you're about to serve, if your father is serving, whatever it is, you know, if it's something that you can identify with the NYSC story, I, I tell you to watch it. You know, Wonder Woman might be a great movie, but Ajuaya is also a great movie and there's also a lot of time to go to the cinema. We appreciate you supporting Nollywood. We appreciate you supporting our hard work. So as you've done in the past with all of my other movies, please go out and watch. Ajuaya. Okay, so one last question that, that, that's out, outside Ajuaya right now. Oh, do you... Oh, okay. oh, <laughs> do, no, not so deep, not so deep actually. Right. Okay, you're yeah, single, you're yeah, single, uh, Nollywood, 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 Nollywood person. How do you deal with female, female fans or female um, appreciation? How do you deal with all that drama that comes in? Um, I love the fact that, you know, both females and males appreciate me. Maybe females are a bit more expressive about how, how they, you know, see my work and view my art. And I, 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 I thank you guys for supporting. I'm not trying to push it away. I'm not trying to run away from it. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to 
not trying to shy away from it. As long as obviously I know where I stand and I know my principles and everybody knows that, then I guess we'll all be fine. Okay, so one last question. Do you get to, okay, have you ever been told that um, probably you're writing on the film that your sister Dakore has? Have you ever had that situation come to you? Yeah, I mean, I've seen it in a couple of places. I heard it a couple of times, most especially when I started acting. I've not really heard about that too much. Do you still hear about that? All right, good. If for people that feel that they should watch, you know, there's a lot of stuff that I've been in, and they should watch, and then let me know, or you know, decide if I f if they feel like I have the talent or not. Okay, so we are here with Kalu George, one of the cast of Ajuaya. Um, how was it like playing this, this particular movie? Unique. It was um, it was a unique experience in the sense that um, you don't get to you know be involved in this kind of project where um, you you have to bring in. Because I, I, I served, so um, I had to pick one of my friends and all that to you know, portray a particular character in the movie. So it was a unique experience playing that my friend, because he was such a funny guy and all that. So I think I had fun, yeah. Okay, so uh, let's talk about your service now. During your service days, what was the most funniest experience you've ever had during your own service? Sleeping outside, sleeping um, in a mosque for like two days. You know, um, in order to get accommodation at the end of the day, and but with the mosquitoes and everything. I don't guess you're not a Muslim, yeah? You know, I'm not a Muslim, so you know that kind of thing. And, but you have to pretend, you don't have to tell them and all that. So it wasn't fresh at all, but at the same time, I think I had fun, yeah. Okay, so what should people look forward to in Ajoya? Look forward to my brother. You need to look forward to my brother. When you see my brother, you will know my brother. Look forward to my brother. Thank you so much. Okay, I don't know how he does it, but looking at him already, you're going to tell he's a very, very funny person. Because I just watched a little clip of Adria and he was cracking us up all through the movie. So this is M series Ninta. How was it like playing this particular scene that you played? Wow. <laughs> that question is the question is question for the girls in the first place. And it's just cool I do Adria it's not like the regular movies like you see and Nigeria scenes and Ajoya was challenging but uh, trying to play that character was, was something that I had inside of me. I'm a comedian of the Federal Republic of Nigeria um, and I, as a comedian, not just a comedian, uh, I'm a thespian also, a theater practitioner and I, I do a lot of writing movies so I, I, I know exactly what to, what to do in bringing the, the character into the cast and taking the cast into the character. So it, 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 was, it was that for me. The Adwaya was interesting though stressful. <laughs> okay, so what should people look forward to? Anyone that wants to go into this movie in the cinema, what should they look forward to in this particular movie? First and foremost, I would say look forward to originality. Then to look forward to professionalism. Then look forward to a film that is actually going to blow your mind. And let me tell you why. It's not because I am in the movie or because, okay, I, I, I got enlisted in the, the characters or the cast to, to play for the movie. It's because Ajoya talks about the, the, the true experiences of Nigeria coppers. When I just send them go bush like that, I don't know what they see for that side. Some of them, this matter, they apple really well for their life. But is that we, they, they don't have the, 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 the opportunity to come share their experiences. So I, I will say that it's a film that every youth couple should see. Every intending uh, student going for youth couple, uh, for, for service rather, should also watch out for it. So as to understand, when you are posted to places that uh, you see, you are there now. You don't know what they do there. You don't know their T's and C's, more like their terms and conditions. You just want to go like that. Before you know it now, what than the native doctor wife self, now you don't even the eye, you don't know. So you need to un watch the film to understand that it's not just enough to just be posted. Because one year many say, ah, I've been posted, hey, here I go. Not just a year I go. Before you go now, you don't come back, you know? So it's something that Nigerians should watch out for. It is real, it is it is original, it is it is it is it is intrinsic, it and it is it is epic. That's the word. Okay, so do you think um youth service should be scrapped in Nigeria system? This question now you the answer now, which barrio Bari is not watching this. Okay, he's okay, he's in London, okay. <laughs> youth coppers with all sincerity, if you ask the majority of them, they will tell you that they should scrap it. In the first place, the stress is too much. The second, they will still finish the one year now, serving our father's plans, some of us, the father don't die. They will come out now. When they come out, no job. Even the Alawi self is not enough to allow the Alawi. So what is this youth copper stress all about? But still, if they think that because they are arranging their, their pockets with it and they are giving people fake and unsized uniforms and uh, uh, bad made shoes and they are getting the older money in their pocket, that's, to me that's why they attend it, because many of them make money from it. But still, in the real sense of it, I believe Nigerian youth should be allowed to go through this stress. I remember when I was schooling in America, in my dreams though, you know, <laughs> 
you know, like, I, I wonder why, why, why Nigeria should be, why, why you should just center the citizenry all around stress and, 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 and troubles. It's not worth it. Most everybody do, do, do a joy. Most everybody match. Porsche, just what it's do. <laughs> Thank you so much. With one of the cast of um, Ajuaya, uh, his name is name is Deck, and he was one of the uh, I think the most uh, funniest. Funny, he was one of the funniest people in, in the movie because he really cracked us up for the short period. How was it like playing this particular role? That you said? Oh my God! First and foremost, Femi is an angry guy, very angry. That's why I'm angry right now that the mic is too close to my mouth. Anyways, yeah, Femi was the angry one. He was pretty much the control freak. He wanted to take control of everything. He wanted to be the boss because, I mean, he, he, he had the ability, you know, to speak the language of the land. And so he thought that, you know, he could control everyone. He could do anything to anyone at any time, you know. But, you know, of course, Timini wasn't having it. A whole lot of people weren't having it. And, you know, a whole lot of story came out of that. That's what we want you to go and watch. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we know this movie is centered around coppers and the many struggles that they face that we people, ordinary people, do not know about and, and all. So what do you think would attract people to the cinema to watch this particular movie? And what should they expect from this, from this movie? Awesome question. The first thing you want to know is, do you like adventure? Do you like something to thrill you? Do you like suspense? You want to see this movie. You want to see this movie. Trust me, a lot of people think that it's horror. It's not a horror movie. You know, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not a horror movie at all. It's just. It's just a movie that would, that would challenge you. You know. You know, intellectually. You know, it's. It's amazing. You know, you want to watch it. If you're a copper, if you want to be a copper, if you wear a copper, you want to see this movie. It will bring up. It bring back memories. It would make you want to, just hold somebody like oh my god this is happening you know that kind of thing you know it's it's a movie you want to watch it's it's a movie that you would love so i want you to please talk to your friends your family boyfriend girlfriend you know everybody just bring them to the cinema watch ajawa the movie 7th july 2017 you won't you won't you will not if i you will not regret it i can assure you i can assure you of it you know all right so honest question now do you think youth service should be scrapped from nigerian system well, the truth is, um, a whole lot of things have lost it, its meaning because um, I'm sure when they created the youth service, it was for a purpose. But because of the fact that um, a whole lot of things have not been put in place and, you know, a lot of people have been ignored, so to speak, that's why we think that is not necessary. And because, you know, people are supposed to take this as a platform to build themselves into certain, you know, to, to, into, you know, certain uh, pers persons. And that's why we have, you know, um, uh, World Health Organizations, you know, USAID coming to teach aid, um, AIDS, FRAC comes to, to camp as well. You know, you have different organizations who come to the camp to train these people. Yes, they have been through school over four years and all of that, but it's also important that they understand you know some certain things about their country you understand but because of the fact that you know you know they have pretty much been uh, marginalized you know and then nobody cares what uh, it's just one of the things that you have to do to complete to show that you have completed school and all of that you know so I don't think it should be scrapped I just think that they should pay more attention to it they, they should they should they should devote more more time to, to, the, to the, the youth of Nigeria you know we're the leaders of tomorrow that's what we have been hearing we are the leaders of tomorrow but we have not seen any leader of tomorrow become actually the leader but we are still waiting we are hoping that I will be the leader of tomorrow but you know I mean I just feel like we should devote more time more energy to it and we'll, we'll definitely have something fantastic out of it yeah thank you so much My name is Lala Akidoju and you're watching Broadway TV. Keep watching. Hey guys, my name is Timini Egbusin and you're watching Broadway TV. <laughs> Hello guys, my name is Carlo George, Broadway TV on our two tights, be in charge. Hey, Broadway TV, I told you I'm bad, but you know, be wins. They say, person with Nick, you know, the people want to pocket. Eh, you say you get one degree, what did they worry you? Ten moments I get 100 degrees, they walk on that pit. My name is MC Reason, the comedy philosophical comedian of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the king of stage, the lord of comedy, and the crown prince of talk. Broadway TV, hey, hey. when I bam, pass federal government, eh? federal government, this one. when I fresh, pass fresh paper. MC Reason sign out, when well, love, diggy, yeah. Alright, your boy D to the E to the C, aka Johnny in the building. Guess what? You're on to Broadway TV. If you're not watching Broadway TV, I think you shouldn't even watch TV. Just go and sit down. I'll be doing 10 or after I want. 
Watch Broadway TV, you know how it is. Peace out, I love you. My name is Tolu. My friends call me Lontana. This is a shout out. Watch Broadway TV.